Hey y'all and welcome back to another exciting tutorial. My name's Luke and in this video I'll take you on a journey from a lifeless piece of foam to an absolutely amazing scene that almost looks real. The tips and techniques I use are very easy and in no time you too will be building your next masterpiece. Let's not waste any more time and get started with the tutorial. Most of my dioramas start with a foam base. I find this material light and easy to carve which makes it perfect for what I'm doing. The plan for this diorama is to have a country scene with the road crossing some tracks. There's no right or wrong way of doing this, however I've found it's much easier to work from actual photos if possible. Once I have a plan I begin with the track. I'm using Midwest Cork Roadbed. It comes in strips which need to be separated and as you may find with many of these cork roadbed products, they can be a little rough around the edges. This is easily fixed with a light sanding. After roughing up the surface of the foam using the wire brush, I use standard wood glue and pins to fix and hold the cork roadbed into position, carefully following the center line I had previously drawn on the foam. To accurately draw the road, I use this block of foam with two pencils carefully pushed through at the desired road width. This is a country road so I use a width of about 7cm. Now that the cork is dry I use the same wood glue to fix the track down. The pins are there to help hold its shape and the spray cans are used to ensure it dries flat and level. And just like that it's dry and we can trim the excess rail from each end. I'm using Xeron rail cutters, but you can also use a Dremel or something similar. Just remember to file the edges if you use the rail cutters, because it may leave a slightly rough edge. Now for the more interesting part, adding the road. First I'll show you how to make these rises to help create a nice gradual rise on the road as it passes over the track. I start with 1.5mm balsa wood and cut a wedge that's 1cm tall by approximately 20cm long. This gives a gradient of 5% which is quite reasonable. Then cut away a small notch so it can fit over the profile of the cork road bed. To form the edges of the road I use Woodland Scenics paving tape. Following the outline on the road I drew earlier. The balsa wood rises that we made earlier are simply glued using super glue to the top of the Woodland Scenics road paving tape following the inner edge that leads up to the track. The balsa wood is thin enough that it can bend where necessary to follow the curves of the road. And finally small pieces of road tape are used between each rail to finish forming the road edges. The road is made using Woodland Scenics Smooth It. Basically it's a plaster material that has a working time of about 5 minutes. I mix it up to a ratio of 1 part water and 2 parts plaster. Just remember to roughen up the surface of the foam so it has something to grip to as it dries. I used a small ruler to spread the plaster out. I wasn't too worried about overspill as I can easily clean up the excess later although I did try my best to be as neat as I could. Spread the plaster out right over the tracks, getting it as smooth as you can but again don't worry too much about how smooth or tidy it is, we can fix minor rough areas later. After about an hour of driving, I remove the paving tape and balsa wood forms as well as any excess overspill. The most important part of creating the road surface is sanding it. Just be sure the road is completely dry, about 24 hours, and sand away any rough spots. Also sand back over the tracks until the rails begin to show through. I'm using very fine 600 grit sandpaper because I don't want to over sand or possibly damage the rails while sanding the road. As an additional measure to have smooth running trains, I use this Pico track rubber and press quite firmly as I run it over the top of the rail. This helps create a shallow groove on each side of the rail, so the top of each rail actually sits above the top of the road surface. This helps the train run easily and freely over the tracks without being felled by any high spots in the road surface near the rails. 
To create room for the wheel flanges, I simply use the back of a hobby knife to scrape away the plaster from the inside of each rail. I check the clearance using the NMRA track gauge or by running a train through the crossing. Next I can start making the landforms using Sculptor Mold. This stuff is just perfect for making dioramas and it's very easy to use and form to your desired shape. It's relatively clean and very light once dry. Something I didn't show was adding the rock faces. They are made using Woodland Scenics rock moulds with plaster of Paris. Once they dry, I remove them from the mould, give them a spray with water to make them damp, and then press them into the sculptor mould and blend them in with the surrounding scenery. The erosion on the embankment is carved into the sculptor mould after it has had time to set, about 10 to 15 minutes. For areas like this where I plan to have a dirt road, I want it to be relatively smooth. So after the sculptor mold hardens for about 10 to 15 minutes, I dip my finger in water and lightly rub the surface until it's nice and smooth. Once it's all dry, I begin colouring the rocks. The colour is completely optional. I chose a medium tan colour made by mixing Vallejo Mud Brown, Deck Tan and Black Wash. Then once the first layer was completely dry, I highlighted it by dry brushing a slightly lighter tan mixture over the top. Then finally, I did a final dry brush of white over the top of everything. Everything except the road, rocks and rail will now be painted with an earth coloured paint and covered with my dirt texture, which I sift over the surface using an old spray can lid and stocking. For the most part I avoid getting paint on the road, however I'm very careful to avoid getting paint on the rocks. Before applying the dirt I mask the rail and the road. I then apply a liberal coat of watered down glue over everything you want the dirt texture to stick to. The glue dries quick so I work in small sections at a time. The glue I'm using is the same glue I use for sticking down all of my scenery it's three parts water and one part Mod Podge with a few drops of dishwashing detergent. And just like we did with the paint, I'm careful not to get glue over the rock surface. However, when applying the dirt texture, I shake it right over the rocks. To permanently fix the dirt, I mist the entire surface with alcohol. If you don't have isopropyl alcohol, you can also use wet water explained here in this tutorial. Links are in the description. I then spray everything with the scenic glue mixture using a spray bottle. It's best to use a spray bottle that can give you a very fine mist. Before the glue has a chance to dry, be sure to remove the mask from the road and the tracks. And the excess glue can be soaked up with a paper towel. In preparation for painting the road, I need to mask the surrounding area. Because I'm using spray paint for the road, be sure to thoroughly mask anything you don't want the paint to go on. The paint I'm using for the road base is Rust-Oleum Flat Grey Primer. The final texture is added by very lightly misting Rust-Oleum Satin Ivory over the top. Here you can see the final texture after misting over the ivory colour. Because the paint gets misted over from a distance to create that textured effect, some of the paint will have dried before it comes into contact with the surface of the road. This will need to be wiped away which is simply done with a dry cloth. Any areas of paint that got where it shouldn't have is easily covered up by adding more dirt texture over the top and gluing in place using the alcohol and glue method we used earlier. A mistake I made was applying dull coat to the road after painting it. It ended up reacting with the alcohol and glue when adding the road shoulders. So I suggest waiting until later before applying dull coat over the road 
or you can even completely omit the application of dull coat because it's for the most part not necessary. Be sure to remove the paint from the top of the rails using the track rubber. You have a couple of options for adding the white lines on the road. For this model, I've decided to use some flexible Tamiya masking tape and Rust-Oleum flat white primer. It's quite a time consuming process, however the results are about as good as it gets. This method also allows for more flexibility in terms of line width when it comes to adding road details. For example, this line that is just before the tracks, it's much thicker than a standard line. The center line is discreetly marked with a pencil before adding the flexible masking tape. And I added dashed lines with each dash being two and a half centimeters long and the space between each dash was four centimeters. As for line width, I just eyeballed the width. I didn't make any specific measurements, but the line is approximately two millimeters wide. Once everything is masked appropriately, you can begin spraying. Just be careful to avoid spraying areas you don't want paint, however remember that you can easily fix unwanted overspray with a touch up of dirt texture. When peeling away the masking tape, try to do it slowly to prevent peeling away the paint on the road surface. Sometimes it's unavoidable like this area here, but if it does happen you can easily repaint this area with a brush to hide the damage, or you can do as I did and accent that spot with darker paint to simulate a pothole or a new road repair patch. More road repair patches can be added with a template cut from A4 paper and a sponge. And once dry I run a fine tip marker around the edge to further accent the patch. Most country roads like this will have road shoulders. For this I use a very fine ballast product from Woodland Scenics called Gravel. It's perfect for doing road shoulders, however another cheaper option might be to use sand, provided you can find an appropriate colour. It gets applied in a very similar fashion to ballast, and once I'm happy I remove any unwanted gravel from the road surface and fix it into position using alcohol, shortly followed with my scenic glue mixture. The excess glue is removed from the road using a paper towel. Here is where I made my mistake of applying the dull coat first became an issue. I suspect the alcohol and glue together reacted with the dull coat as the road dried and left this faded white residue behind in some spots. Luckily it was easily fixed by spraying the road with alcohol alone and just letting it dry. Like magic, the white just disappeared and never came back. I suggest skipping the dull coat step altogether as it's essentially not required. The rails are painted with Tamiya hull red and once dry I remove any paint from the top of the rails using a paper towel lightly soaked with isopropyl alcohol. Ballast is then applied between all of the track tyres. I try to avoid having ballast sitting on top of the tyres. A little trick to help get the ballast off the top of the tyres is to lightly tap the rails with your brush. In the same way we fixed the road shoulders, I first apply the alcohol, although this time I'm using an eyedropper. Once the ballast is thoroughly soaked, I apply the glue in the same fashion. Next is the more exciting changes, adding some greenery. I start by placing static grass tufts in areas where I think they will look good. Once I am happy, I glue them down using full strength Mod Podge. These tufts are homemade using my static grass applicator and some 6mm static grass from Mini Nature. You can buy grass tufts, however they cost quite a lot of money, so if you can, I suggest building your own static grass applicator, then you can make thousands of tufts for a fraction of the price. 
Again, using my static grass applicator, I apply 6mm grass in and around the small grass tufts using full strength Mod Podge, working in small sections at a time because the glue dries very fast. Then after waiting just a few minutes, I use a stocking placed over the end of a vacuum cleaner and vacuum away the excess grass. The stocking allows me to catch the excess and use it later on other areas. To help blend the transition from the bare dirt and the taller 6mm grass, I add smaller 2mm grass to the outer edges of the longer grass. I don't do this everywhere, just some selected spots, like along the roadside and near the tracks. Even with all this static grass, the ground still looks too uniform. To help break up the tone, I add patches of ground up leaves and bark. This is a great rough texture that adds varying tones to the plain dirt and grass. I sprinkle this in patches right over the dirt and grass, not worrying too much about where it ends up. And for even more colour, I add a variety of Woodland Scenics ground foams, in a couple of different colours and textures. I try to be as random as I can and apply it in patches. The dirt road gets some detail as well by adding texture down the center line and the edges. I then use a brush to remove any unwanted foam from the tire tracks. And finally, before adding glue, I place some larger branches and twigs around the diorama. Before fixing all that detail in place, I mask the road and tracks. Then as always, I pre-wet the scenery with the alcohol and fix everything in position with the scenic glue from the spray bottle. And be sure to remove the masked areas before anything has a chance to dry. Now this is my favourite part of making the dirt road, adding highlights, because it makes such a dramatic difference to the overall look of the road. Using a yellow ochre pastel and a hobby knife, I scrape some pastel shavings into a small bowl, then with a dry soft brush, I lightly dust the pastel over the road surface following the tyre tracks. I start light and gradually add more pastel until I'm happy. You can see how much of a difference simply adding highlights to the tire tracks actually makes when comparing the two roads here. And just like the dirt road, the paved road gets weathered as well. For this, I'm using AIM weathering powder, Dark Earth. This is quite an intense powder and a little goes a long way, so I only need a very small amount on the brush to get the effect I'm after. I only apply it lightly down the center of each lane. The reason I use the AIM weathering powder and not the pastel on the road is the AIM powder has a binding agent which helps it stick to the smooth road surface. The same coloured pastel doesn't stick well and is very easily rubbed off the smooth road. And you can see again how much of a difference this simple step makes when comparing the two lanes. With the same weathering powder, I add it to the centre and the edges of the tracks. I'm a little more liberal with the application of the powder on the tracks as I want it to be weathered quite a lot more than the road. Now I can start adding human elements. I start with these crossing signals from Bush. The lights operate on these so I had to cut away at the base using a hobby knife. Once I had a spot for them to sit in, I punched a hole right through so the wires could poke out the bottom. To fill in the excess space in order to have the signal sit at the perfect height, I filled it in with plasticine. I could then push it down 
Add some texture around the edges to hide any obvious gaps and glue it in position with alcohol and scenic glue. Next came the street signs. To make your own street signs, you can check out my tutorial, Make Your Own Street Signs, for a very easy and effective looking sign. The best way to work out where to place signs and which signs to use would be to go out and actually have a look in the real world, or even easier, have a look at Google Earth in Street View. The hardest part here is getting the sign to actually sit straight, but with some patience you'll get it. They are simply glued and held in position with full strength Mod Podge. And finally, we can add trees. These trees are very similar to the trees I make here, which is itself another tutorial called Cheap, Fast and Easy Trees. The main difference here is I spray paint the tree armatures with a medium grey spray paint, and I also added some knock leaves to the branches over the top of the ground foam. I experiment with the position, and once happy, I drill a hole for the trunk to sit in and glue it into position using full strength Mod Podge. Additional shrubs and bushes are also added using Woodland Scenic's fine leaf foliage. Some of the smaller ones don't need a hole drilled, they can simply be pressed into the grass and they are held up by the taller grass fibres. Well that completes this tutorial for building a complete road crossing scene. I hope you enjoyed watching and maybe picked up a new tip or technique you can use. If you want to help support these videos, you can also check out my Patreon page to make a small donation. Cheers and thanks for watching.